Well, welcome to my second all lessons, it's great, John. Great to be here. Good to see good you. Good to see you, same. How are you doing? Very good. I'm really excited for tomorrow. You do? It should be fun. Yeah. And the gig as well. So let's, let's tell people, the people what, what we're doing tomorrow, what's happening tomorrow. Uh, so basically, there's going to be a workshop uh, in Wisha Guitar Schools, which you should all check out. It's a great uh, guitar school based in Wisha, and we're going to be talking about uh, some of the things that I like to do. And it's, it's basically going to, it mainly is going to be concept based because you know, ideas are infinite, so if you can pass an idea to a person, then they can adopt it and take it wherever they want. Also, there's also going to be a bit of talking about studio work, because I've done that quite a bit, and I think it's important, as well as a kind of, it can be a good re you know, stream of revenue for musicians to do studio work. So, um, and obviously there's going to be question and answer and lots of jamming, so yeah, it's going to be really good. Excellent, excellent. So let's take it back um, yeah. a little bit. How did you end up where you are? What got you into guitar playing? And uh, yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, one of my high school friends, when I was about 15, he gave me a Metallica CD, you know, the one with the orchestra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I never really loved music before, and that just did something to me. And uh, I started listening and air guitaring. I was too embarrassed to air guitar, so I just, I just said, look, I'll get a guitar. I said to my folks, I'll get me a guitar so that I can at least play the tunes that I want to learn. And <laughs> it started like that, and then it gradually becomes, um, it's just something becomes you in a way, I suppose. You know, you know how it is. You kind of, you, you express yourself through it, and it's, it's something that you can do better than talking and stuff. Yeah. You just get a guitar and play something how you feel, and, and, and now it's just, you know, what I, what I do, I suppose. Right. So it's just kind of ended up that way? Yeah, it was meant to be like just for kind of, just to play songs, because you know, sometimes it's using a broomstick to play guitar, it's, it's not as cool, is it? <laughs> so it started like that, and then it kind of, it's just, you know, it became more yeah. of an outlet of expression, expressing emotions and ideas and things like so, that. So when you began, obviously you said Metallica, but who were some of your biggest influences then and even now? Um, I mean, I started as a metalhead, I was like into metal, like <clears throat> uh, Metallica, um, Megadeth, Nevermore, Exodus, Creator, I mean I used to love that kind of the metal band uh, and then I got into, when I was about 16, 17, I got into a lot of 80s like Dokken and Rat and um, Winger and things like that and Extreme, I mean Nuno is still my favorite yeah. guitar player, like Nuno is amazing and uh, then I got a bit into Jazz and Fusion and and you know, throughout college, I experimented with lots of stuff. But now, I'm more kind of, I really enjoy like the vocal songs. I really like just generally like good songwriters. Uh, so, but I still enjoy the opposite of the instrumental stuff. Like Extremist is one of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But my my main influence would also be my teachers. Like they all influence me a lot. And who were some of your teachers? Yeah. So like, we started in the beginning when I was about 15. For a mutual friend, I met this guy who's also the founder of Zyvery Guitars, the, the company, yeah, yeah. And his name is George Carlos Paris, and he kind of, uh, he lived in London at the time, he'd studied in, uh, I think it was the Institute, and he was the one who actually told me about Leeds College of Music, okay. uh, which was really good, because at the time I was like about 15, I didn't really know anything. Was he so still in Greece at that time? I was still in Greece, yeah, and uh, he kind of introduced me to people like, you know, Warren De Martini and George Lynch, as well as Fusion guys, and. TJ Helmerich and Scott Henderson and Alan Holdsworth, so that was a great experience and uh, we did one or two sessions with him, he just showed me some stuff and then obviously he, he had to come back here because he, he lived in London. Then after that uh, I met this guy, incredible guy called uh, Kostas Paraskevas, he's got a Nemesis guitar school in Greece yeah. and uh, he's just incredible, he helped me so much to kind of build my technique, he was very strict, everything's got to sound clean and nice and he also did lots of workshops which was great because I'm in a really small city by the beach in Greece and it was incredible because he, he gave me the opportunity to see some of my heroes live. So he did great things for the city and then obviously uh, from MySpace I got forwarded a link about a guy and that guy was none other but Tom. Yeah. Uh, I was 17 at the time, I, was, I, was, I didn't even know I was going to be accepted in Leeds and then I was like, oh Tom, I was like, I sent some message in MySpace. I said, you're, you're like great. I love your playing, and we just left it at that. And then I got accepted in Leeds, and then before I go, I saw that Tom was in Leeds, so I contacted him straight away, sent him an email, and I did about a year and a half of lessons with Tom, as well as my uh, Leeds College of Music teacher, whose name was Ulrich, who was like a 
more of a jazz musician, but we kind of had an understanding. I wasn't really into jazz, so he, he was very good about kind of teaching about melody and be very melodic and timing and so lots of, I really uh, I have to, I'm thankful for the people that I've come across with in terms of my, yeah. my development as a guitar player and musician. So obviously when you're saying about going to Leeds College of Music, yeah. uh, how, did, how did that really come? Did you make a conscious decision that I'm going to leave Greece <coughs> and go to, and why Leeds? Uh, yeah, I think it was, I was actually talking with my parents and my, my dad said, look, look, he said, if you want to do this, you've got to leave the country because there's no prospect for that here. And uh, I was um, I was actually quite scared of them. I was about 16, and I was like, "I'm from a small city," so I was like, um, "But he said, if you know, look, if you if you gotta do this, you, you gotta go, uh, you gotta go abroad because that's where the scene is and that's where the players are." And he was right, and my, both of my parents were really supportive. And George, the guy, I told you he kind of recommended Lace College of Music, which was uh, really cool of him because I didn't really know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when I was 17, because I went to school a year earlier than all the other kids, just because my parents were working, so I had, to, I had to be somewhere, so I went to school earlier. So I, when I was 17, uh, I left Greece and I came to Leeds. Okay, and so going to, to Leeds, how did that affect your your ideas about your career and you know your career itself? Uh, I mean, the great thing about Leeds College of Music as an institution is, is kind of... You know like how you get an institution like you know ACM, ICMP, Guitar Institute, and there if you go there as a guitar player, it's very much about okay, here's some Monston, here's some arpeggios, here's some this and this and that. And Leeds College Music, not that there's anything wrong with that, but Leeds College Music is more open to okay, you're in a place where there is in classical Indian musicians, there is lots of cellists, violinists, um, percussionists. It's not just a, so what you approach guitar with a more of a kind of let's approach the music in a, yeah. in a brighter, in a broader kind of sense. So that was a great experience because straight away you got, if you wanted to play with everybody, you could play with everybody because it was quite a confined environment. So you just open up yourself to so many kind of sounds. Uh, then it wasn't about oh, what picking like I'm going to play, it was about more like about the emotion and the vibe. Yeah. It was a lot about the vibe and that's great. Like that, that was really good. So you're glad that you had that kind of exposure to that? that Definitely, sort of because it, kind of, it makes everything about the music, you know, because yeah. in the end that's the most important thing, I think. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, um, you know, after you went to Leeds College of Music, you ended up taking part in the Guitar Idol competition. Yeah. Um, what was the kind of, uh, at that point in time, did you really see yourself as as um, trying to get a career as a guitar player? Was this Yeah, I think that was, uh, that was on my second year in uni when that happened. It was really good. I mean, it was it was a bit because I it was a great experience because I met some of the guys the year before because Tom went and I went with him and so I'm I'm not really happy with my performance of the day. It wasn't very good at all because I didn't really have a lot of gigging experience. I was really nervous, but as an experience, it was great because that's how I got the Lick Library thing out of it because I played on the Lick Library stand as well and that's yeah. when Stuart and King got in touch with me and we got the first DVD out. But at the time I wanted to be an instrumentalist, like an instrumental fusion guitar player at the time. That that, 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 that happened, which ch changed a bit now. Right, the, okay, so at the time, but are, are, you, are you pleased then with the the results that came from that, getting off of the, the DVD with that Clive? Yeah, that was really good. I mean, I'm not happy with the performance, but it's, it doesn't really matter, isn't it? It's just an experience. But it was good, made some really, met, met some really cool people, and uh, it was just good to be in a place where you know, with passionate people about what they yeah. did. And obviously the Lick Library thing is great. I'm actually, I've actually filmed some more stuff, so you need to go to the, whenever they come out, you need to check them out, because... Uh, you some videos for Lick Library? Yeah, I've been, I did some uh, stuff a while back, and some more recent stuff, like yeah. a couple of weeks ago, so they'll be out at some point. Excellent. So, yeah. So, you've you've obviously, you've got your first DVD, Contemporary Lines for Electric Guitar, <coughs> yeah. but as well as that, you've also done a functional package, um, for your website, the end session one, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. see that there's another one of those is coming soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the end session basically was it's basically it's one of my songs. It's called Hope, and I did an improvised take, which is you can get in dual angle, and there's a transcription of it. And I'm also taking people for different melodic choices that they can apply. Because you know when you got when you actually play over static groups, you want to give some variation. So I'm taking through some different melodic choices. And uh, <clears throat> just um, there's some backing tracks there, so it's it's quite a good package. I mean, you get to get a lot of chops because I do a lot of you know quite rocky licks, and they're all transcribed very accurately. And um, the second one is actually on the way. I'm just 
I've been so busy because I've been doing some a lot of shows at the, at, at the moment. I'm doing and also filming for Lake Library and stuff. I haven't had a chance to finish it, but it's all been filmed. It's just about to get edited. So um, and I'm also thinking about doing another package about studio work because I'm going to film in a, in in a, in, in, in a proper studio and trying to emulate that. Uh, but yeah, I'll keep everybody posted from my website so. You, you guys can check it out Excellent. when it's ready. So you obviously you've got your instructional packages now, you're talking about these other things that are coming in the future as well. Is teaching and sharing you know, what you've learned yeah. this fun of here, is that important to you? Is that something that you want to you want to share with other people? Yeah, I mean, uh, teaching, the, I think the, the, the relationship between a teacher and a student is really important, especially when it's a really good one, like if it's a mutual relationship that both are kind of given. So, uh, I'm really, I teach a lot over Skype and I've, I've, I've had a pleasure teaching people you know, from the States, Australia, Germany, back in Greece, some people, because obviously I'm here, um, so I can't really be there to teach, uh, teach people from India, and it's, it's really incredible how small the world has become with the internet, because you can communicate ideas really simply, just, you know, just over yeah. Skype. And obviously I've got some one-to-one -one students, uh, I'm still taking inquiries, and. Uh, yeah, I like teaching a lot. Yeah, you yeah, really enjoy but, it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just before we move on for that, did you ever see yourself when you were back in Greece living? Did you see yourself living in London, doing lessons over the internet? Is this something that you, you had in uh, mind? I think, I don't know, I think you've got an idea of how things can be, but life never turns out the way you want it to be. I think you've got dreams and inertia them. Like, my dream is to be able to play my original songs and tour around the world and have a platform where I can do that and do nothing else. And that's my dream, and I try to nurture that, you know, and see yeah. it in my head. But uh, yeah, things kind of come up that you didn't expect, and then you just kind of grab the things you want to do. And that was one of the things I wanted to do. And I'm really happy that I'm in a position to to have interest from people all over and kind of be able to teach them and talk with them, exchange ideas. That's really good. So I, I know that as as well as these lessons, that obviously when you spoke before about the session work, yeah, should they work? I know you do some of that online as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the, over the, now, when we're talking about the session, what yeah. is there any advice you would give to, to people who are watching about yeah. not so much the, the the needs and requirements that you have as a musician, but the yeah. non-musical skills that you yeah, have to yeah. have in order to you know be the guy to call, as yeah. they say? I mean, essentially, like obviously, let's let's take as a given that the the musicians the musicianship skills are there. Then, you know, when you come. They do recording and record, it doesn't matter whether that's a, a big label or a small label, you come in and work with a group of people. So, you know, you, you got to make sure you, you're easy to work with, you, you know, you, you bring positivity in the session because things might go wrong, you know, or you might be a bit out of your comfort zone, but if, you're ha if you have got a good vibe and, and then everything is, becomes easier. Uh, so, you know, just try and be informal, be polite, be, you know, be pleasant and try to be a t you know be a team player because really when you come into a thing as a session player, um, you don't. It's not about you. You are putting your 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 inspiration, but it's it's part of a bigger plan. If you wanna, if I might say, like it's, it's somebody else's vision and you put your own color, but it's gotta you know he the person you work for. You know, it's got to love what you do. You yeah. can't be able to say, okay, I don't want to do that, I'm going to do that, and I don't care. Because it's not your album. When it's your album, you, obviously, it's your thing. So that's really important. People skills, it's, it's all about people skills. And obviously, you've got to have the, the, the musicianship stuff yeah. down. You can't be there and not know the material because, you know, you, you're never going to get a call back. But yeah, it's just about people skills. It's like, you know, uh, think of it as <clears throat> you, you want to be the person that, if they ever wanted to go for a beer with and have a laugh, that they'd call you and be like, oh, let's get that guy out, he's, he's a laugh. You know? well, that's kind of, that's the thing. I so obviously with that, you're saying that the, the musicianship skills, they're already there, you know, that's taken for granted. That's something that's got to be there before you would yeah. approach. So with that in mind, what is your your sort of idea about practicing? And you know, what's your, what's your practice schedule like that you in terms of, Is that in terms of studio or in general? And just in ge obviously in, in general, just making sure that the musician skip skills are there. Is yeah. that something that is a big part of your um, life? I mean, I don't consider myself a musician that can do anything. I'm not a jazz musician. If I get a call for a jazz session, I'll say, I can't do that. But 
I'll get that guy who can do that. It's really important when you don't know something to tell them, I don't know that. Well, I appreciate the honesty, but I'll, tell, I'll get you that guy who can, is really good at that. And I mean, it, the thing is, because I've spent a lot of time doing a lot, a lot I've got some musicians, like very close friends to mine, that we used to jam a lot and a lot of different styles, and I've been involved, like playing funk bands, rock bands, Indian classical stuff, African bands. And that's, for me, that's the best kind of practice because you, you get it in a room with people and even though the first, second or third time might not sound as good, then you feel the vibe so you get the experience for the music from an organic kind of point of view. So you don't really sit down and say, okay, like let's say African music, is, it's got lots of major chords, one, four, fives, you know, and you practice. I mean, that's 10% and then, then it's about the vibe. So I think it's very important to have the foundations there, to have the, the technique, to not have to think about, oh, I've got to pick that note now. Because that gets in the way of your performance, but you want to be able, you know, you want to you want to feel things. You yeah. want to be able to feel the sweat and the tears of a jump session, and the, you listen what's happening, and then you, you come across with then what you get there is is more authentic, if I'm not saying. So what you're really saying then is that in order to prepare for, you know, session work in different styles, then really experiences for is what players are looking Yeah, experience that. music like how it's meant to be like jump, go and jump with different stuff. I mean obviously the, the more you record yourself the better you become. A lot of times I'll sit at home and say, oh let's make a rock track and I'll just try ideas out. Like I've got, I've got I found out that when you lay down a, a rock, because I did a recording recently for a band, really cool band, they call it Nigel Passi Band. It's the band I did a gig with in the O2 as well. Which is, they're, they're a really t talented band, they're very promising. And there's this kind of approach to, you, you know, when if you want to lay tracks for a rock pop kind of thing. I found out that it's really good if you have a pedal melody and you play stuff more like an octave with a distortion and then you lay down the full chords with a clean tone like let's say that sound just sounds much more open and it, right. it's, it fits much better especially when you have a production where you've got strings and keys. So things like that you learn as you go along but uh, I think yeah just go out there and find musicians and, and jam, go to jam nights and just rehearse, just jam with musicians because then it's improvised, and when you improvise, you it's more it works, that works quicker. You know what I mean? Yeah. So obviously, then I mean, currently the sort of the climate is that YouTube and you know bedroom guitar playing yeah. seems to be the big thing. Obviously, a lot of people nowadays maybe aren't as exposed to the live scene and the jamming yeah, aspect, yeah. and you know, is obviously that seems then like for you, music isn't about scales and arpeggios and and picking licks. It's more about getting out there with other guys and jamming together and... I mean for me that's what that's what it's all about but in the end it's all about I think people play music because they want to you know, be happy so if it makes you happy to sit in your room and learn those licks and play over backing tracks that's fine if that makes yeah. you happy for me it's just about there has to be a human element to it you know yeah, but that's just that's just me it's not, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing if you're a bedroom guitar player if that's what makes you happy but you know about me. De def definitely, yeah. of, of course. Yeah. Um, no, obviously you, you've mentioned a couple of times that your real kind of a drive and focus certainly at this point in your career is to, to make your own music. Yeah. And you know you mentioned that you would like to be able to tour the world playing the music that you've wrote. Yeah. Do you see that as being, you know, you'll be the, the sort of arranger for a band? Do you see yourself having, you know, a big band, a small band? What's, um, what, what's your sort of... I mean, I, uh, I've always written music, it's just kind of, it used to be more, like Between Two Worlds, my first album is instrumental. Uh, but it's all, because I've always kind of written music, because that's, I suppose that's a way to, it, it's almost like a diary, you experience things, and then when you get away from them and be able to face them in a third person view, then for me it's like a process, I'll write songs about it. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, the stuff I'm doing now is just stuff that I'll write, so I'll write, I'll write the song, the melody, a big part of the arrangement, and then I'll probably get some people that I like their playing and I can get along with, and we'll rehearse. I mean, obviously, if they've got suggestions on the songs, I'm more than you know, happy to listen to what people have to say, but I generally have 95% of the song in my head yeah. done, so I just want to get people that are, are willing to kind of be in a position where they'll be like, okay, I'll play this part, play this part, that's fine. And that's what I'm aiming to do now. Um, so I'll be doing that in London. I'm starting to. I'll be doing some gigs on plug with a drummer and a bass player, and then I'll eventually kind of get a whole band, electric band, together to to do that. Yeah, of course. So yeah. I mean, in, in the future, do you see yourself doing any more instrumental things? Well, uh, I think that it will happen. It will come. It works like a cycle. You know, I think I'll do some vocal stuff, and then 
I'll definitely come back to do some more instrumental. I mean, you never know. Maybe you know. I'll, 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 I think so. That's very valuable thing. Excellent. Yeah. So let's let's just kind of uh, wrap it up a little bit. But we were talking about the the future. Then what is your sort of is are things going the way you planned? That's everything. Uh, is everything uh, good just now? I mean, uh, I don't know. I think you you make plans, but then life kind of happens, and then it rarely goes as planned. But then you. I suppose it's how you take things. I mean, there's a lot of good things happening right now, especially with a um, lot of the equipment that I've been using. I've, I've, I've had an endorsement deal with a, a great company. It's called Zagre Guitars, and they are they are great guitars. They're you know uh, use really good woods and kind of very quite kind of elite uh, intricate color kind of woods. It's not like the woods you get in a mainstream guitar. They're very uh, sophisticated choice of tropical woods and uh, great pickups and for me that's a really good thing because I've got an instrument that you know it, it's really me like it's yeah. the best instrument I've played and also that we're working with the company kind of uh, gives me platforms for me to go and play like I'll be I'll be doing um, Frankfurt uh, which you guys should come and say hi if you're gonna be there uh, we're gonna be in the Hayden Ums stand playing Hayden Ums and Zagory guitars, uh, which is a great thing. I'm getting some pickups as well from um, Brian Jepson. He's like an American custom guy. He makes incredible pickups. Like his PAFs are the best pickups I've ever heard. So it's really good. Uh, that that side of things is really good. And uh, started getting some more gigs. You know, as as you said, like as I just kind of I moved to London fairly recently. So when you're in a in a city like this, it takes time to. To you know, to get connected because there's people that have been there for years, you know. So, yeah, but it's it's good, man. Life is good, you know. And I'm here and you know making new friends in Scotland, doing this workshop, and it's all about for me. It's about connection and experiences, and uh, I, you know, I'm getting some of those, so that's great. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Why don't we uh, wrap this up and head out for some Scottish food then? Let's do it. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much, George. My pleasure. Excellent. Excellent.